Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue back on the Key Concepts video series where I take some IP routing key concepts and break them down into a simple format and give you a broad overview to help supplement your textbooks. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the OSPS states. So with that said, let's kick on, let's do it. Okay, so let's first list the states and we'll do that by going to the trusty whiteboard there. Okay, so the first state we have is called down. second state is called attempt. Now just be aware, this state here, you're not really going to see it because it's only there when you do manual configuration of OSPF. So you actually specify the neighbor and use unicast rather than using your multicast automatic discovery. So this one typically isn't there and it only applies on non-broadcast multi-access networks such as frame relay. So just be aware of that one. We're not really going to see that very, very often. The next one you will see, this is called the init stage. Then we have two-way, then we have what's called x-start, then we have exchange, then loading, and then after loading we've got one final state which is the completed state and it's just called full. Now, if you're struggling to remember these states, I've got a quick mnemonic to help you understand it, and it's pretty ridiculous by by purpose, effectively, to help you remember it. And that is, Dracula attacks individuals to extract extra lively food. Okay? So if you're struggling to remember them, just think of that. Think of Dracula getting into a real state, uh, getting drunk on blood, okay? So if that helps you, use it, okay? So now, let's look at the actual topology and go through the function of each state, okay? Okay, so this is the actual topology we're working with and what I'll do towards the end of the video is actually capture some packets with Wireshark just so we can see what's happening, okay? So if we go here, and what I will say is that router 2 and router 4 already have a full adjacency established between the two of them and likewise router 1 and router 3 already have a full adjacency established between them. What that means is that router 1 and router 2 actually aren't configured for OSPF on these interfaces yet and that's what we're going to do and we're going to see how they develop and transition through the stages to actually establish that full adjacency okay so let's just talk about the stages then so like I say down is when there there is no hellos received and attempt is only really available on non-broadcast multi-access environments when you're manually configuring the neighbor okay so the first one we're going to be doing is when we actually put OSPF on both of these interfaces, the first stage is going to be the init stage. Now the init stage is basically when a hello packet has been received, but the local router doesn't see its router ID in it, okay? Be aware though that in the init stage, to pass the init stage, we've got to have matching parameters. So that's like your area ID, your subnet mask, so on and so forth, which we talked about in previous videos. And if they don't actually match, then we're going to be stuck in the init stages. So if you're stuck in the init stages, check those parameters, okay? Okay, now after the init stage, we transition to two-way. Two-way is when a local router sees its own router ID and the hello packets sent from its neighbor. Now be aware, remember when we talked about DRs and BDRs, the designated router and the backup designated router? In those environments, routers will only go past this two-way stages with them. So the DR others will only maintain a two-way state with each other. They will not transition past two-way, okay? So just keep that in mind, okay? Now, the next stage is X start. This is just to negotiate a master-slave role between the two neighbors, okay? And the highest router ID will be determined the master. Now, the role of the master is to decide when to move to the next phase, and it determines the MTU size, the speed of the transition, and the DBD sequence numbers. So, X start, we're just negotiating master-slave roles, and that's pretty much it. Now, after the X start exchange is completed, and we've negotiated our master-slave roles and whatnot, we then transition to the exchange state. Now, in the exchange state, all we're doing is going to exchange DBDs. Remember those? Those are the database descriptions. So effectively, router 2 is going to tell router 1, here's everything I know about the topology. And router 1 is going to send to router 2, here's everything I know about the topology and their database descriptions. And then effectively, what they're going to do is compare each other's maps of the network and look for, what do you have that I don't have, okay? And once they do that, we're going to move to the next stage, okay? 
So now we enter the loading phase. Now remember, with OSPF and link state protocols, what is the end goal? The end goal is for all routers within the area to have the same map of this area, okay? So, router 1 sent a database description telling router 2 about the networks it knows about. Router 2 has sent router 1 a database description telling about the networks it knows about. They're comparing each databases to each other and noticing that one's got networks the other one doesn't know about. Okay, so what's going to happen is, let's look at router 1. Router 1 is going to see that router 2 knows about the 172.16.1.0 and the loopback 4.4.4.4. It doesn't have that in its database, so it's going to send a link state request to router 2 to, hey, Give me that information you have about those networks. I don't have that in my network, or in my database, sorry. And likewise, router 2 is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to see that router 1 knows about the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network, as well as the 3.3.3.3 .3 loopback on router 3, and it's going to send a link state request to get information about those networks. Okay, so once the request goes ahead, okay, Let's look at it from the point of view of router 1 again. Router 1 requests information about the 172.16.1.0 and the 4444. Once it sends that request, router 2 is going to send an LSU, a link state update, to update router 1 about the networks it doesn't know about. Once router 1 gets that update, it's going to send an LSAC to acknowledge and let router 2 know that I have now got that update and I've now got those informa that information that you sent me, okay? Okay, now let's go back to the topology just to see what happens then. So remember that routers 1 and 2 do not have a neighbour adjacency established. So what we'll do is we'll take a packet capture on gig 00, 0 and we'll actually put up that adjacency. So let's just put that in place first. We'll not go into this, this in too much depth just to get a rough idea of what's going on so you can visually see it, okay? So just put that there and we'll go in and activate OSPF on those interfaces. So int gig 0, 0, IP OSPF 1, area 0. And we'll do the same on 2. Int gig 0, 0, IP OSPF 1, area 0. So as you can see, we've actually had a flurry of updates for OSPF. We've got some descriptions going across, some updates, acknowledgements, so on and so forth, you'll actually notice that they're not just updating each other, but you'll notice they're actually sending an update to the multicast address so that all their neighbours get this new update just to let them know we've got this new information. Let's just take a peek at a packet, so link state request from 1 to 2, we've got a request for Advertising router 2.2.2, network 172.16, so this is basically router 1 requesting router 2 information about the 172.16 1 1.1 1 link, which is this network here. And that's pretty much it, so like I say, there'll be a, an exchange of databases, they'll compare the databases, see which ones they don't have, and for the ones they don't have, they're going to send link state requests. And the opposing router will send a link state update about that information, and then we'll send a link state acknowledgement back to let them know we actually got that update. Okie doc. So that's the end of the introduction to OSPF states, and that's pretty much it. So thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon.